My name is Christian Lillyrose. And I'm Eric Owens. Today we're going to work with players that are new to the game and teach them the fundamentals of table tennis. We're going to be covering basic but important concepts such as grip, timing, technique, and rules. I'm sure this program will be beneficial to you no matter if you are a player, PE teacher, or a coach. The first thing that a beginner runs into is to hold the racket correctly. You hold the racket in the same way as to shake hand with the person. The way we recommend is that you do not have any wood in between the hand and the rubber sheet. And all the fingers should be connected. On the forehand side you have the thumb and the three fingers connected. On the backhand side you have the index finger on the blade and all the fingers are connected. A few common mistakes is that the thumb can go up on the blade or the finger can go up on the blade. You want to make sure that you're not doing either one, that the hand is flush into the racket and that the finger and the thumb are not on the rubber sheets. Okay, I'm not going to see if you can do that correctly, so try to hold the correct grip when we go around and check that you do it correctly. Good. Perfect. I'll That's make sure right. It's a little loose. Yep. All right, very good. Now you're ready to play. The first thing we're going to work on is off table drills. We're going to work on balancing the ball on the racket with no bouncing. You put the ball on your forehand side of your racket and try to keep it in the middle and make sure that the ball does not fall off the racket. Then after you've done that you move over and do the same thing on the backhand side. You keep the ball in the middle of the racket and it gives you a training on minor changes with angles of your racket which is very important in table tennis. Okay now try to do the same. So you start by putting the racket on the ball with the forehand side. And make sure the ball does not fall off the racket. Excellent. Okay now move over to the backhand side. Look in the ball. Keep it in the middle of the racket. Try to make it not move. All right, good. Then we go to the second off-table drill, which Eric will show. The second off-table drill we're going to do is a little bit more difficult. Instead of holding the ball stationary, we're going to bounce it on the forehand side, keeping good control over the ball. Once we gain control on the forehand side, we try it on the backhand side. And remember, always keep a proper grip. Your turn. <coughs> Try the backhand side. All right, the third off table drill is alternating forehand and backhand with bouncing the ball. Try to do this about 50 times. Once you can do it 50 times, then you've gained enough control to where you can move on to the next off table drill. Good. <laughs> proper grip. No, proper grip. There you go. So try not to bounce the ball so high. It's better, easier to control it if you bounce lower. The next soft table drill we will do is a backspin drill. To be able to produce backspin, you have to contact under the ball with the racket. The ball will pass a line on the floor and then go back over that same line because of the backspin you produce on the ball. So I'm standing here about three feet away from the red line on the floor and I'm making backspin with the ball and then it comes back to me and over that same line. And that is the first introduction of spin and the best way to do that is to make an exercise off the table without a, a table involved. Alright, so try to do that. 
So you're going to stand here, you're going to make the ball pass that red line, and because of the spin, you want the ball to come back over that line to you again. Again, make sure you have the proper grip. That's better. You have to hit under the ball and pretty high. You have to hit the ball pretty hard. Good. Yeah, almost. Good. You see, you go, you go here, like this, and then there. The biggest difference between a ping pong paddle and a table tennis racket is the rubber. If you notice on the ping pong paddle, the pimples are faced outward on the rubber, which makes it very difficult to create spin. On the table tennis racket, the pimples are inward, which creates a smooth surface on the outside, which makes it very easy to create a lot of spin. I'll demonstrate the spin. If you notice, on the table tennis racket, the spin grabs the rubber and shoots straight up. On the ping pong paddle, the same amount of spin goes straight down. There's no friction on this rubber due to the pimples being on the outside. Therefore, it's much more difficult to create spin. The last segment of the off-table drill portion it's a drill we use to make it simple for the players to play on the table, but we do that by taking off the net. We let the both players roll the ball on the table, and that makes it very slow, and it's easier for the players to get a feel for racket angles and forehand and backhands. So here, Autumn hits the ball right now to Joanna, and on her side, she needs to prevent the ball from going off the table. And the way you divide the sides is in the middle where the net was before. So we're going to see here if uh, they can uh, get the ball to the side. And there Joanna was able to hit the ball off the side and Autumn sides. So Joanna wins the point by she, Autumn not being able to hit the ball before the ball went off the table. So this way you can practice backhand, you can practice forehand, you can even do doubles in a slow, easy environment that is very good for learning for a beginning player. And the ball goes many times over the net and it feels like you're playing table tennis, but it's very simple. And it's a lot easier than having a ball, having to go over the net. The next set of exercises we're going to look at is called round table tennis. It's a very good way to play when you have too many players and not enough tables. On one table you can play up to maybe 20 players. We're going to show an example when we have the coach playing on one side of the table, on the other side of the table we'll have four players. The way we're going to start the first drill is that the coach will stay on that side of the table the whole time. The players on this side will hit one time each, and after they have played one time, they run around the table and stand in line for the next time to play. Let's see what that looks like. Hurry up. Okay, stop. The way we continue now is that when one person missed, like in this case, then that person is out. So now it's only three players left. 
So I'm sorry, you have to come back next time. <laughs> so now we only have three players left, and that of course means that you have to run faster around the table. Let's see how that looks like. Okay, now he missed, so now there's only two players left. And the way you do it, when you have two players left, they play a final. So you go over here and Eric will rest. Okay. And now you play a final when you do one serve each. Okay, so it's 1-0, so you play first to two. Now you're serving. Net, play it over. Joanna is the champion. That was 2 0. So Joanna is the champion. The second version of round table tennis with the same setup that the coach stands on one side, which in this case is illustrated by Eric, and all the players are lining up here. Instead of hitting the ball one time, each player now will hit the ball two times and that gives it a little bit more training per each person. And it's another way for the beginning players to get more practice against a good player. So now each person is going to play two times each, and we do the same thing running around the table. One. Two. And then you go away. One. Two. One. Two, one, two, one, two. Okay, that's enough. The another version of round table tennis is when you play with the same number of players as far as possible on each side of the table and you don't have a coach. The way you line it up, as in this example, we have three players on this side of the table. On the other side of the table, we have three players. So each player hit the ball one time each and after that, they directly go over to the other side of the table and wait in line for their turn to play. The first person that hits will do a serve, and he has to serve the ball while only using half the table, and the serve has to go cross-court. So the first bounce has to be on this half, over the net, and then the ball bounce on the other side of the table, on the right side. So I do the serve, and directly I go over to the other side of the table and wait for my turn to hit. So go over there. Okay, and in this version of, tab of round table tennis, we do the same thing also as we did with the other version, that if a player misses, then he is out. You have to sit down, now we have five left. And it's always important that the side that serves always have to have more players than the side that returns if that's the combination of players left. Okay, so now we have four left, so you serve. Okay, so now you serve, and in this case, when you only have one player on that side, you can serve anywhere. Oh, that's a good shot. 
And in this case, we have now a final. So um, Joanna's going to take on the national champion here. And we also do the same thing we did before, that you uh, do one serve each, and you play to two points. So Jana, start a serve. Eric is under a lot of pressure here, but he's had one zero. Two zero, and surprisingly enough, Eric wins. We're now going to talk about timing. Timing can be broken down into three parts. The neutral position, the backswing, and the follow through. To have a good neutral position, the first thing is to do is to be relaxed. You want your feet about shoulder width apart with your weight on your big toes. You want your knees bent and both of your arms at a 90 degree angle with your weight evenly distributed throughout your body. This is the correct neutral position. Now we're going to demonstrate. The first thing is to start with your feet about shoulder width apart. Lean forward from your upper body with the weight on your big toes and bend your knees. Have both of your arms at a 90 degree angle. Bend your knees a little bit more, there you go. And your weight forward on your big toe, ready to play with your weight evenly distributed throughout your body. The racket there. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Lean forward, lean forward, more forward, more forward, more forward. There you go. Now you look like champions. The next part of timing we're going to talk about is the backswing. The backswing starts with the neutral position and you backswing the same speed as the ball. That means if the ball comes at you fast, you backswing fast. If the ball comes at you slow, the backswing should be very slow. But before you do any type of backswing, you want to wait till your opponent hits the ball. Waiting as long as possible will give you the best possible timing. Now let's demonstrate the backswing. Remember, to have good timing means to have a proper backswing. To have a proper backswing, don't forget to start from the neutral position, wait as late as possible before beginning the backswing, and always backswing the same speed as the ball. Let's let you guys give it a try. Start in the neutral position with proper grip. And remember, backswing the same speed as the ball. Return to the neutral position. Great. Great. Very good, very good. Notice how he's always returning to the neutral position. Very good. Excellent. Okay, next. Too much power. There you go. Always return to the neutral position. Back, yep.
There you go. Very good. Very good. Notice how she always backswings the same speed as the ball. Very nice. Remember to keep the grip. There you go. For a beginning player, the first time you start to play at the table, timing is absolutely the most important. Once you have the correct grip that we talked about, the next step is to hold the racket in a neutral position the whole time when you play. For a beginning player, that might be maybe the first year of play that you have to focus on doing that correctly each time you play. And that will give you the proper basis for moving up to the next step as a player. The next segment covers technique. This is what you work on after you have worked on timing. The first part of technique is block. That is a basic for all offensive strokes. A block is like acting like a wall. You're retrieving the ball in the same speed as the opponent hit the ball. 